And it's another exciting show of The Economy and You. Uh, I love the title The Economy and You because everybody just gets so excited about that title. <laughs> I'm Chris Leitham here. Uh, today's guest um, is uh, Barbara Howell with Under the Sea. And it, welcome, everybody. I'm glad to have you here with us here at Think Tech Hawaii. Barbara, welcome to the show. Nice to have you. Thanks, Chris. Yes, Thanks for uh, having you're me. You're a busy entrepreneur, but you were nice enough to come in and talk with us today. So I really appreciate that. Hey, my pleasure. Okay. Okay. So um, now you have a business where you you brought a glass bottom boat to Hawaii. Uh huh. And now you're in business. Yeah. Yeah. But it took a little while to get there. Oh yes. Yeah, yeah. So what? Um, so now, doing business in Hawaii, of course, can be a rather challenging uh, um, uh, task since there is just. Uh, a body of regulation here, and mm -hmm. especially if you have a boat. Right. Is that about right? Mm hmm Okay. Yeah. So, um, so your boat was, um, so tell us a little bit about your boat. Tell us how you got here. Okay. And what, what in the world made you think that you would gonna come to Hawaii and, do the, and get involved in the tourist business? Oh, man. Well, okay. So I'm a marine biologist, right? Uh -huh. And I have been teaching marine biology for years. And I'm not going to say how many years. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but uh, I was in Nevis, on the island of Nevis in the Caribbean in the West Indies. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be closer to my daughter, so I figured, okay, I'll go over to Hawaii. And my son at the time was living in Arizona, so it would have been closer to him too. Mm -hmm. So I got over here and I went, okay, now what am I going to do? I'm on an island full of marine biologists. How am I going to stand out? I have always had my own business, mm -hmm. uh, usually involved going out and, and being in the water and sea creatures and teaching and kids and adults and schools and the whole bit. Yeah. Anyway, so I, I tried getting a real job here and I, I good realized, luck with that. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I did. I got a really good job, but I was terrible. <laughs> As, when you're an entrepreneur, basically, I think you're not employable. Oh you yeah, know, you, you know, that's you an have, interesting thought. You, you have your own ideas about stuff, and, mm -hmm. and uh, anyway, so I tried that, and then I thought that uh, I needed to start a business again. Mm. I'd had a business in New England, a business in the Caribbean, right. and I really didn't know if I was up for starting a business here um, because of my age. Uh -huh. But I, I can't not do it. So there was the boat. Okay. And, well, okay, so I figured the only thing that would allow me to compete in a really competitive snorkel tour mm -hmm. environment yeah. um, was to have something totally unique and different. And so I had the boat. Yes. And it just happened to be down in the Caribbean. Yeah, well, there you go, right? That's <laughs> just a small problem. Oh, I got stories to tell about that. Uh -huh. um, and then I had to jump through all kinds of hoops to get it here. And well, did you have to go through the Panama Canal then? Well, okay. So the it took me a while to find someone who would be able to ship my boat, right? Oh, so you had it shipped. I Yes. So oh, the okay. idea was, and I paid premium price, Yes. the idea was to get the boat from St. Martin, put it on a ship, sail it through the Panama Canal mm -hmm. to Honolulu. It was going to take 18 days. So I was all That's excited about that. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was like, wow, great. this is cool. And being on a ship, it would be cool because it could put it on once, mm -hmm. and it wouldn't be bandied about, and the chance of it being damaged would be really small. Mm -hmm. Well, evidently, they missed the ship. The shipping company didn't tell me. But there was one ship a year that did that. Oh. <laughs> and they missed getting my boat on that ship. Oh, no. So a couple of weeks later, I was like, why am I not hearing that my boat is arriving? Right. And uh, then they told me. And they had taken the boat, put it on a ship, shipped it up to Miami. It got to Miami when the government had shut down. 
And oh. so it couldn't even get through customs. Do you remember that? Back I remember. in this 2013. During, right, during Obama. <laughs> yeah. So the government was shut down. So I was waiting to get through customs. Then they found someone in, um, to trail it from Miami to Long Beach, California. Um, that means you're <clears> pulling <throat> it behind another vessel. Uh, um, they had a flatbed, I guess. Oh. And so they were trailing it behind the oh, 18 Oh, you mean it by land? Yeah, the by land. By land. Oh, okay. So after, you know, it took boat to Miami, Miami on a truck, and the shipping company never told me any of this. So you're thinking it's on the boat, but in fact it's, it's right. yeah. So now how long did it take to actually get here? Oh, well, okay. Um, it was supposed to be here in October and it got here in December and it's really funny because along the way um, I don't know the the previous harbor master at Coalina mm -hmm. um, saw my boat and the cops had it pulled over to the side of the road in Arizona and the reason they did is because they said it in order to transport a space vehicle you need two escort vehicles. Oh, and is that a boat? state law? That's a state law. Yeah, but okay. I just have, a, and so the, the poor driver of the truck kept having to say, it's not a spaceship, it's a boat. Yes. And I don't need two escort vehicles. Ah. It got seven, it got stopped seven times along the way. Wow, you just kind of think maybe the police officers could find something else to contend with. Yeah. When, when the shipping company told me that, I didn't believe them. Uh -huh. um, but, but Chuck from Coalina happened to be at the exact intersection in Arizona when he saw my boat pulled over. And he goes, it's got to be Barbara's boat. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. got to be because they're so unique. There's just a few. And it looks like a spacecraft. It does. Wow, it is, is it is really weird looking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, when the boat got here, now you had some additional challenges. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so the shipping company that then didn't tell me uh -huh. that they were shipping it by land, um, they sent it on a truck and didn't insure it. When it got to California, mm -hmm. it was all broken up. We finally got it down here and uh, got it into uh, Jim Maynard's shop at, at uh, Pacific Diversified Finishes. Uh -huh. And was that mostly had fiberglass? to rebuild. Yeah. No, actually, it's an aluminum vessel, oh, very okay. lightweight aluminum vessel. It's a hydrofoil. It goes up above the water and oh, I see. can okay. go very fast. All right. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, it was all messed up. So we had to totally strip it down to the hull and rebuild it. Wow. So it's basically a brand new boat, and. Uh, I, and also, before I had it shipped over here, I had to find a harbor to work out of. Here and in Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, then so, I thought, okay, well, I'll just keep it up at Waianae because that's where I was living uh -huh. at the time. Well, was it easy? So it was quite a challenge to find a skip. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't find any place to, to put it. And that was, is that because of the, the size of the vessel? No, it's because there are moratoriums on commercial vessels. Ah. So, um... So there's a moratorium that says you can't bring any more... Commercial. commercial vessels into the Hawaiian Islands or just Oahu? Into the, each marina has their own allotment of commercial vessels that they will take. I see. And every marina was full. Okay. The only one that wasn't was Koalina. And I went down to Koalina and it's a very beautiful marina. Yes. Um, but you have to be accepted to keep your boat there. And oh. they hadn't accepted anybody for almost 10 years. I think it was like seven years or something like that. And yet they were the last, the last, last hope. The, exactly. Yeah. And uh, so I went down there and it, it took a few months for them to make a decision, but they decided that the boat was different enough mm -hmm. and our programs were different enough so that we wouldn't be direct competition for the, the tour boats that are already there. Oh. 
and we take small groups. Mm -hmm. We have marine biologist guides. We have we do Hawaiian cultural stuff. So ours is is education. Plus, it's a glass bottom boat, right? And the glass bottom is uh, it's ma it's curved, so it magnifies everything twenty five percent. Oh, yeah. Okay. So when you, so when you see something, you, you get a nice visual. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So now you had uh, some other challenges with this, okay? Because you said this boat wasn't actually. Be before we went on the air, this wasn't a U.S. made vessel. <laughs> that created some additional challenges. Yeah. The boat is made in Russia. You mm -hmm. order you order one, they build it. Mm -hmm. We happen to uh, get ours from a resort in St. Martin, so we didn't order one new. Mm -hmm. um, but you cannot bring a commercial, a foreign built commercial vessel into the United States to work without permission. Mm. which is also something I didn't know a whole lot about. Yeah. So it's something called the Jones Act. Right. And it's... We were very familiar with the Jones Act. Here oh, you are? Oh, yeah, because it's, yeah. it's sort of one of those things that bedevil uh, growth for Hawaii. Yeah. In a lot of different... It creates constraints in all different kinds of ways. So this is another example of another artificial constraint. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and the thing is... It, it, there are no foreign, I mean, there are no U.S. built vessels, anything like this. So it's not like I could buy one. Yes. So anyway, I had to go through all of that. And the whole process took about a year from start to finish to get permission to um, use the boat mm -hmm. commercially. So now once you got that accomplished and you had to skip, now you've got to put together a business plan and, and, and start to execute and find right. people who are going to take out on tours on this boat. Exactly. Now, uh, we're going to take a commercial break okay. uh, shortly, and then I want to come back and I want to talk about some of those unique challenges. Okay. Hi, folks. I'm Chris Leatham here with The Economy and You, and we'll be right back. Hey everybody, my name is David Chang and I'm the new host of a new show, The Art of Thinking Smart. I'm really excited to be able to share with you secrets on giving yourself the smart edge in life. We're going to have awesome guests and great mentors of mine from the political, military, business, nonprofit, you name it. So it's something for everybody. Aloha, my name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. Welcome. We are co-hosts of a show called Keys to Success, which is live on the Think Tech Live Network series, weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. We're looking forward to seeing you then. Aloha! Hi, I'm Chris Leatham, and this is The Economy and You. Thank you for watching uh, and uh, for staying tuned. Today's guest is Barbara Howell. Barbara uh, has a company called Under the Sea. It's a company where you have uh, people take tours in your glass bottom boat. Right. Yes. Now, now this is not your grandmother's glass bottom boat. Unless well, my grandmother never Nicholas. had a glass bottom <laughs> boat. Okay, yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> if you if your name is Nicholas or Bryce, then it is your grandmother's glass bottom boat. Ah, okay. But but um yeah, it's it's not like any other and our programs are not like any other. People think when you go on a glass bottom boat you just get on and you slowly cruise here and there. Mm -hmm. Nuh uh we whip around from place to place and we do snorkeling and stuff with whales and dolphins and sea turtles and the whole bit. Uh huh. So, oh, that's nice. Yeah, but it wasn't easy getting it going. It really wasn't. Well, what are some of the challenges from a business perspective? You know, um, just just like how do you like get your you had to get your website up, and then you had to reach out to tour operators or come people who sign people up for tours and such. Yeah. How did you go about that? What was that process like for you? Okay, the the media, um, the marketing is the most important part of the business once okay. you have a really good product, uh -huh. which. That was easy for me to set up because I've done it so much. But um, at first, I, I had uh, a woman I knew that, that was big into marketing, and mm -hmm. she was very, very good. But unfortunately, I couldn't afford her. Ah. <laughs> so then, um, uh, the challenge these days, back when I started my business, 
you know, I used to do my own marketing. You make up a flyer and you pass it out or you take it out an ad in the newspaper. Now it's all social media uh -huh. and your website and all that stuff. So um, the people believed in my, my project enough to help me with it for free. Mm -hmm. So my first cool. website nice. was done for free, yeah. Oh. And, um, uh, and social media was done by my crew. I had photographers and I have young folks, you know. Yeah. And yeah, they yeah. know that stuff. So I know a little bit of it, but mm -hmm. it changes so much it's hard to keep up. So, so being able to find people that could do that was really challenging. And um, then I had someone working for me who absolutely adored and was really, really good. Uh, and he got us into the hotels and, mm -hmm. and he got that whole process started. And then he... he um, That's a lot of door knocking and yeah, handshaking. Yeah, no kidding. Yes. It, I mean, it was months and months and months and months. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and here I'm thinking I can get the boat in the water, you know, and mm -hmm. it's like, okay, everybody, we got this boat here, let's go. No. <laughs> anyway, um, I've had crew move, you know, when you're dealing with people that are, um, you know, it's a lot of military on the island. Right. So if you yeah. have crew members that are married to military people, you know you're going to lose them. Yeah. So uh, anyhow, so there was a lot of fluctuation in, in um, the marketing aspect. And... So then it all fell on my head, which was totally... That's overwhelming, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's like, okay, this, this is not going to work. So I'm actually still looking for somebody who is really, really good at marketing who okay. can get me out there. I think I know somebody. We'll talk about it after the show. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so this is a... So marketing is a challenge, and that sounds like yeah. that's an ongoing challenge in it order is. to get people... To you know, keep the boat full and um, and make sure that it's you know running as a profitable enterprise. Now, um, I want to sort of touch on a little bit here on something that I'm, a lot of people are, don't really want to talk about too much, but th it's a regulatory environment here in Hawaii. Yeah. Right. It's, it's fairly regulated. Now, there are some regulations that we need, and there's some regulations that maybe are a little over the top. Uh, is there anything that you would like to point out that you think might we might be able to sort of tweak the language a little bit and Make, make it a little easier for people who are trying to launch a new enterprise in Hawaii or do business here? Well, it, it wasn't that bad because it was very easy to get a business license. Mm -hmm. So that was good. Um, it's just that things are very expensive. Uh, partway into having my business going, um, the DLNR, Dobor, uh -huh. uh, as you know, now we have to pay two hundred dollars a month for uh, using the water. You know, so that's that an interesting tax. Yes, that's an interesting tax. Two hundred dollars a month for using water. Yeah, well, salt water. Salt you know. water, yes. Yes, yeah, the so salt water tax. So yeah. all of us that that make our living working out on the salt uh -huh. water. We end up having to register and pay two hundred dollars a month. Now, what does that go toward? Did, is there any indication of what how those funds are spent or? Why? I have the absolutely no idea, no idea. But I, uh -huh. I'm hoping that it goes toward water-based things and maybe pollution mitigation and and uh -huh. things like that. But to be honest, I don't know. Do you know how many companies would probably be paying this? This. This tax? Is it I, I would be dishonest if I even tried to guess. I have no idea, but I mean, all of us at Colina are all of us that all, all it's the any snorkel commercial tours. And, okay. Yeah, now, what about and, fishing boats, maybe? Yeah, the yeah. fishing boat. Anybody that actually is out there working on the water commercially, mm -hmm. making a living at it. I don't know about fishing. Yeah. Um, you know, like a fisherman as opposed to the. Um, fishing charters. Oh, yeah. I don't, yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's different. Yeah, wow. So, so that's, and that was, is that a new tax or? A thing that's like a year old. It About was year old? kind of a surprise, you know, and wow. you had to, you had to, the first payment was like $800. <laughs> 
and then you had to pay your 200 for the month. So uh, I guess they made the regulation but didn't tell anybody for a while. Oh, and, really? And by then it I was... I love taxes like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to tax you, but we're not going to tell you. And then we can charge you late fees because you didn't know about it. Well, they didn't charge any late fees, uh, okay. but, you know. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, you know, I can understand it. But having come from the Caribbean where there's, like, zero regulation, Yeah. And, and setting up a business is easy and inexpensive, and the people are very helpful. Um, so that, that's it's different. been way different. Very, okay. yeah. Well, a lot maybe more you challenging. could you could share a little bit about the tour um, that you're doing, and uh, what's the name of the vessel? Uh, Kalea, Kalea, which which means joy, uh -huh. and uh, it yeah, it's just really unique. It's thirty feet. And it was designed for um, 16 passengers, mm -hmm. and it was certified by the Norwegians, you okay. know, because they know their stuff over there. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but the U.S. Coast Guard says, no, we have to certify stuff ourselves. Right. And uh, so, so how I, how I can't take that many people. So you can take up to 16 people. Or up to no, 14 people. The boat was built to or take up to 16 okay. people. And then how many crew do you have on the boat? I have initially it started out with me and two other crew members, a uh -huh. marine biologist. I was doing I was being captain at the time. Uh -huh. And a marine biologist and a Hawaii cultural specialist. Okay. And uh, you know, someone who grew up here and um, knows the culture, uh -huh. ancient and modern. Right. And, uh, so that only leaves 13 people that you could put on the boat to max out per tour. tour. Is that no, about right? no, 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 I can't even take that many. <laughs> 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 they, they allow you to take six. Six? Six. Oh, interesting. So six on a, on a tour boat, uh -huh. on a tour that goes out, I mean, and our tours are four-hour tours because um, I didn't want to do three hours. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, right. because that allows us to be really, uh, be in areas where the other boats aren't. Oh, okay. And um, it, it's a, just a super unique tour. Yeah, we do, we, we do um, hang out with the dolphins. Uh-huh. If they're amenable to it, it's totally, totally sensitive to the animals. Yeah, because they and come in when they come in, they're sleeping, right? They're kind of exactly. Yeah, and so you don't they're want either, to disturb their sleep. Yeah, they're either sleeping or they're socializing. So, uh -huh. so they're out hunting at night, and right. then they come in, and and that's their time to get into smaller groups and socialize. So you get like the the teenagers that are causing trouble and stuff oh, like really? that. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, after a while, you get to know what's going on out there. And um, you uh, get the, the nursery pods, we call them, the mothers and the babies uh -huh. and aunties and maybe uncles in there, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, then you get the, the guys and they're hanging out and then you get the mixed pods. So uh -huh. anywhere from, you know, six, six in a pod up to 80. Really? Yeah. Wow. So they come in and they do a little socialization and then and then they chill out. Uh-huh. And that's uh, when they're kind of sleeping, right? Cuz what I understand is dolphins sort of shut down one side of their brain. Yeah. And then they like that's kind of like they let one side of the brain sleep and mm -hmm. then they it's like <laughs> <laughs> with wide eye open, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> it's really cool because they, uh -huh. they're generally swimming in pairs. Mm -hmm. And the guy on the left will have that eye open. Oh. And the guy on the right will have that eye open. Uh -huh. So between the two of them swimming together, they can see everything. They can see what's going on. Right. Plus, they have a scout. That's right. There's a, one or two scouts right yeah. in front. They're usually the ones that are jumping up and spinning ahead of the rest of the, the, the dolphins, right? Yeah, and they'll, they, they go on the outskirts between the, um, the deep water mm -hmm. and the pod uh -huh. and check for sharks They're looking or for sharks. Yeah. I've actually had, uh, when I was a guide, when I first moved here, I got a job as, as a guide so I could understand, mm -hmm. you know, learn about it. And... Um, the the, the um, scouts get to know you, uh -huh. and so 
if they want to tell you something or say back off or whatever, they'll come up to you and you, you have no doubt as to what they're saying to you. But like they may come zooming straight up right at you and then just stop and look at you and you know, look, these guys don't want to be pestered. Let's just go yeah, snorkel yeah, over yeah. here or get out of the water. Isn't that something? It is. And they're amazing animals. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's very inf insightful. I had no idea yeah. of all the years I lived in Hawaii. Yeah. Now, we have an interesting shot here. Who's this lady on the boat? Oh, I have no idea who she is. Oh, yeah. Yes. That's me. And yeah. that's my other captain, Ashley. She's the one that whose husband got transferred. So. Oh. I totally miss her. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so well, uh, I'll have to, you know, maybe bring in some video of uh, of uh, your boat and some of the excursions. That oh yeah, 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 I have some really good video. Okay, it's really neat, and we have some online. We so we're okay. So the site is called underthesehawaii.com. Is that the right. website? Yep. Okay, and then how can people? Is there there's a phone number and all the contact information is there? Yes. If people want to book a tour. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and you can go directly online and book a tour. And right now we have 15% off. So there's a code called online15, which is really creative. <laughs> <laughs> Again, you know, the marketing thing. Uh -huh, anyway, uh -huh. so, so if you, you go to the website and you pick a tour, then you can book it yourself. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to pay commissions or anything like that. Okay. And then you get a 15% discount. 95% of our business comes from direct online booking. Wow. Yeah. Well, thank you again, for uh, Barbara, for being on the show. Thanks, Chris. And, uh, Thanks for having me. And folks, I hope you got some useful information out of that. If any of you would like to go on a, on a tour uh, with the Glass Bottom Boat called Under the Sea Hawaii, check out the website. And thank you for watching. And we'll see you again in two weeks right here on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha.